today we're talking about work problems with decimals in them. And we're just going to do some examples to help us think about when we would add, subtract, multiply, or divide. And we'll do that as work problems with decimals. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. So here's an example. Leanna Archer knows all about the importance of being able to add and subtract numbers with decimals. As a business owner, she deals with money. Numbers with decimals are often seen in expressions of dollars and cents. Let's read the instructions below about how to add and subtract numbers with decimals. Answer the questions that follow. Adding and subtracting with decimals. Here's some helpful hints. You always want to line up the decimal points of the numbers you're adding or subtracting. The decimal point in the answer should also line up with the decimals in the problem. And we saw this when we worked on adding and subtracting decimals. If necessary, add zeros to the ends of numbers to make them the same length. So that you always have placeholders. Add or subtract one place at a time beginning from right to left. Remember to write the decimal point in the answer. And there's just a couple of examples where you see lining up the decimals to add or subtract. Multiplying with decimals, so this is a nice review. So when you multiply, you multiply the problem as if there are no decimals. Multiplying is the only operation where you don't line up the decimals. This is really important, so everybody make sure you hear this. Multiplying is the only operation where you do not line up your decimals. The decimals over one place, and 1.121 the decimals over three places. So that's a total of four spaces that the decimal is moved over if you look at the two numbers plot. So when we multiply like normal, we get 383382, and we're going to move our decimal over four spaces. One, two, three, four. Dividing with decimal, you cannot divide by a decimal. So you cannot divide by a decimal, so you can move your decimal over until the number you're dividing by becomes a whole number. So in this example, 2.1, we're going to move it over one space so that that number will become a whole number, the number 21. Since we move the decimal over and the number we're dividing by, we have to move the decimal over and the number we're dividing into the same number of spaces. So instead of having 3.48, we can go with 4.4. So now that we have a whole number dividing into either a decimal or a whole number, either way it's fine, we now line our decimals up so we know where the decimal will go and we cancel and then we divide it for the number. In this example, you're being asked to round to the nearest hundred, so you take it, you divide it out to the thousands, and then you see if that three in the answer becomes a three or a four, in this case it stays a three. It's important to always divide one place value further than where you need to go. In this example, if you buy a box of ball point pens for $2.18 and you give the cashier $10, how much change should you receive? It's $7.82 because we subtracted $2.18 from $10, and that was $7.82. If you buy an ebook for $29.62 and download five slots for $1.29 each, what is the total amount you have spent? So we added the price of the ebook to five times $1.29 and we ended up with $36.07 for our total price. In this problem, we go 10.22 miles on a height. After walking 2.7 miles, uh, stop your rest. So how much further do I have to travel? 
and then subtract 10.22 miles minus 2.7 miles. Then 2 minus 0 is 2. This becomes a 12. 7 becomes a 9. 12 minus 7 is 5. And 9 minus 2 is 7. So 7.52 miles. She now purchased four pieces for 28 points each. So they're each. That doesn't mean that all four plus 28 points each. Each one is plus 28 points. If she had a five dollar bill, how much money did she have left after purchasing the pencils? So the first thing we want to do is figure out how much the pencils cost. So we're going to multiply twenty-eight cents. So we're going to multiply twenty-eight cents times four. Now we don't really need to worry about that. So what we're really doing is just multiplying twenty-eight times four. Eight times four is thirty-two. Two times four is eight. Eight plus three is eleven. And now we deal with the decimal. So it's in point 0.22, our decimal is going to go to two places. We're going to move our decimal over two places in our answer. So that also means that it costs $1.12 for all four pencils. We have a $5 bill. We want to know how much change we're going to have. So we're going to take our $5 bill and subtract the cost of the four pencils. So that's $5. Minus the cost of the four pencils, which is a dollar twelve. This is ten plus nine. This becomes four. So it costs three dollars and eighty-eight. So we have three dollars and eighty-eight cents left after the purchase. Okay. Trace has a piece of wood five point six feet long, and he's going to divide it into four pieces. So that means we're going to split five point six by four. We're going to divide 4 into 5.6 to see how long each piece will be. And we do that, 4 raised into 5 once, it's one more favor, and we bring our 6 down, and 4 raised into 16 is 4 times. So it's 1.4 feet. Each piece will be 1.4 feet. Tanya purchased 5 stocks, and if you have the um, price for all 5 stocks, we're asked to find the average. The average is where you add up all the numbers and divide by how the numbers are. So that's going to be an So I'm going to add up 21.50 plus 35.75 plus 18.25 plus $28.02 plus $15.75. Notice I'm lining up my decimal and lining up all my place values what you do when you add or subscribe to numbers. So when I add all these together, I get $119.27. So that's my sum or total amount I'm spending on my stocks. In order to figure out my average, I'm going to divide by how many stocks I have. So I'm going to divide 5 into $119.27. I know that when I divide with decimals, I want to make sure I line my decimals up on top of each other. So if I'm divided by a whole number, I don't have to worry about moving the decimal at all. So 5 goes into 119, so it's going to go into 10 um, twice. Give me a remainder of 1. So that's all. I'm going to bring 9 down. 5 goes into 19 three times. The remainder of 4. Bring 19 down. 5 goes into 42. Eight times to give me 40. So there's a remainder of two. Bring my seven down. Five goes into 27 five times. Times 25 is a remainder of two. I'm going to add a zero to the end here. I need to round to my hundred because this is money. So I'm going to go ahead and take it and divide it out to my thousand. I get a four here, and I can round. So my answer is going to be twenty-three dollars and eighty-five cents rounded to the most cent or the most hundred. You can set this up as a ratio. So if the train took one point two hours to go seventy-three point eight miles compared to Fayetteville, and I'm looking for the rate, what, they, what that means we're looking for is miles per hour. And we're given the miles per hours, and what we're trying to figure out 
is miles per one hour. So this is miles per hour that we're getting. We're getting 73.8 miles takes 1.2 hours. Well, when you're looking for a rate of miles per hour, that means you're looking for how many miles in one hour. So the way that we're going to get one hour is by dividing by 1.2, because 1.2 divided by 1.2 gives us one. So we're going to divide 1.2 divided by 1.2 in order to get one hour over here. And if we do it to the denominator, we have to also do it to the numerator. So I'm going to divide 1.2 into 73.8, exactly as Ashley said. So I'm going to move this decimal over and the number 1.2 because I can't divide by a decimal. And if I do that, I also have to move it over one place and then I'm going to divide it into. So ultimately, I'm dividing 12 into 738. And my answer, I'm going to get 51.5 miles per hour when I complete my long division here. So in my ratio, I now have 61.5 miles in one hour. So when you're working with miles per hour, you always want to divide by however many hours. I have a pile of DVDs. Each DVD has a height of 3 tenths of a centimeter. If the pile is 7 and 5 tenths centimeters tall, how many DVDs are in the pile? In this problem, we have a total of 7.5 Remember, we're only talking about whenever you have a total and you're splitting that total up by division. So we're taking this big pile, this total of 7.5 centimeters, and we're dividing it by the height of each individual um, item to see how many items there are. So it's 7.5 divided by 0.3. So instead of our long division, we have to move that decimal over to make 0.3 a whole number. We can't divide by decimal. And since we move it over one place, and the decimal over one place is 1 3 tenths, we have to move the decimal over one place. And seven to five times. And three is going to go into seven two times. And three is into fifteen five times. So your answer is twenty-five to